thank you NAS for having us and thank you all for joining us today wherever you may be in the world as we walk a mile in my fins and talk to you about the women of maritime arts science and technology or WOMAS as we call it now WOMAS is a platform for networking mentorship research and support for people who identify as women and non-binary and today you will briefly hear from the founders all maritime archaeologists originally from four different continents with varying specialties and interests who all recognize the importance of creating a centralized space for maritime disciplines to come together to combat inequality and inspire, enrich, and empower, and encourage one another. Now we'll start off, we have Wendy Van Divenvoord, a maritime archaeologist and associate professor at Flinders University in South Australia, whose nautical archaeology understanding and years of mentorship bring lateral thinking to any project. We also have Tony Massey, a maritime archaeologist, senior project officer for the Queensland government and reef ambassador, and she's leading a charge to protect maritime heritage for both the cultural and natural heritage. Maddie McAllister, a maritime archaeologist and senior curator at the Museum of Tropical Queensland, who use, whose use of photogrammetric technology and lateral visualization tools enables us to revisit past excavations and new sites and understand them in a new way. We have Emily Jadeth, a maritime archaeologist and curator of ocean science and technology at the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney, Australia, who has an interest in utilizing technology to tell different maritime stories. And myself, Deb Sheffy, a maritime archaeologist and curator of the Maritime Archaeology Collection at the Western Australian Museum, who looks at sites through the synergetic relationship between the cultural and natural heritage, with an aim to better interpret site formation processes and seeing ways that we can tell how, what they can tell us about contemporary climate change. A lot of us have known, studied, mentored, worked, and supported each other for the past 15 years. But due to the nature and sheer size of Australia, and the fact that we have lived in different states and at times different continents, means our collaborative opportunities are grossly limited. So the original idea for WOMAS stems from the five of us talking at a conference about how we wanted to pull together a fieldwork project that enabled us to work together, but also complement our individual interests. We initially chose a remote site in the northwest of Australia, in warm tropical, tropical waters off the Great Barrier Reef. And that's just north of where Maddie McAllister um, lives and works in the far northwest of the country. It's a site with a powerful history, which would have allowed us to share some of the untold stories of Australia. But like many spectacular sites in Australia, it's remote and the number of project participants would be limited by the berths available in the research vessel. Now I mentioned we all have different areas of expertise, so each one of us wanted a little something different during the project. But the reality was with limited time and resources, we couldn't do it all. There was one component that was unanimous and that was the decision to integrate education, outreach and mentorship into the project. No one wanted to compromise on those aspects and before we knew it, the research vessel was too small. We did, however, realize it wasn't the field work that was driving us. Okay, let's not lie, the warm tropical waters are enticing, but it was what we wanted to do with others in the space that was the driving force. We wanted to share what we love with others, encourage others to look laterally and collaborate, and we wanted to provide support, mentorship, and opportunity to those who may not always be in the foreground of a situation or in a discipline. So as we started to look at ways we could do this, we realized there are dozens of support groups for women linked to maritime studies in the industries, but the majority of the programs or groups are discipline specific. There are incredible established women's dive clubs, women in ocean science groups and women's marine biology forums, women in marine tech sites, computer science groups, women in industry, and so on. And they're all on social media, they're all available digitally, and even some get together when COVID possible these days. Um, but there was not a platform for maritime arts, science, and technology to converge. More often than not, we find platforms for women in maritime STEM, but archaeology often falls outside of what is considered science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And let's be honest, a comprehensive search, survey, and management of any maritime site, be it cultural or natural, should comprise more than one set of tools, because none of us can do it all. And the holistic approach to cross-disciplinary research results in a more comprehensive micro, macro, and global perspective on any site. So on that note, let me welcome you to WOMAST and onto my colleagues who will introduce the what, where, and how of this integrative space. Thank you very much. So I'll continue um, of where Deb left off. So thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, good evening. So I'm saying hello to you from Kangaroo Island in Southern Australia. 
where we're on a field practicum at the moment. And I just wanted to show you the photograph here that we took this afternoon. We're actually in the field here. Um, and this is us, um, six students and one of my colleagues um, on the way this afternoon. And of course, because of COVID and COVID restriction policies, um, we're with quite a small group, six students and two staff. And we're gonna um, excavate a site here where there may have been the earliest construction of a ship in Southern Australia. And I'm showing you this picture because it gives you a good idea of what we're talking about within education. And when I say education, I'm really focusing on maritime archeology span in Australia, um, where um, I run and convene together with Jonathan Benjamin, the maritime archeology span program. Um, and that's mainly master's certificate. Um, so postgraduate studies. And this particular program has run for 20 years now and was established in 2002 by Mark Steneforth. So when we look at this photograph on the left-hand side, we see our only Australian student in this group, Lucas. Um, then we have John Nauman, my colleague, um, uh, who came to volunteer on this particular practicum. And then we have um, Hiro, our student from Japan, then we have Fakrun from Indonesia, and then we've got Justine from Canada, Ria from India, and Lily from the US. So just when you look at these six students, you can see two things. Um, we have more females here than we have males, and two, two guys, four student girls, um, but also we have one Australian and the other five are international. They come from different countries. And so I'll just give you a little bit of some statistics so you get an idea and compare maybe Australia because I only have statistics for Australia um, and not for other countries or other programs that are run within maritime archeology span globally. So, for the last 20 years, on average, our student body has been 70% female every year. So we've always drawn in more women. But if we look at um, students that complete and graduate from the program and then get hired, at least in Australia, and let me try to go to the next slide, it's stuck. Um, and those students work as um, graduates in underwater cultural heritage management agencies or museums or consultancy companies, universities. Um, we see that at least in Australia, and I did a quick tally today in which I wrote down every um, professional that I know in the field. So in state heritage agencies, in government agencies, um, but also within um, the museum environment, uh, we can still see that 75% of the professional body in Australia is male. So something goes wrong or something gets out of whack when we translate um, our, our female student numbers to professional numbers and then those percentages get flipped. And of course there, that's an area where we really need to work on making sure that also the professional body reflects um, the number of, of females that we graduate um, and are successful to secu in securing jobs within the field. And the photograph that you see here was um, this year's field work on um, International Women's Day. Uh, we took this particular picture and there the field work crew was again about 70% female. But it's not just that, it's not just a gender balance thing, of course. Um, and I do understand that in Australia, we this is of course a Western um, university-based system, an educational system, uh, which is not necessarily reflective of what happens in other maritime programs around the world and in other regions in particular. Um, but we have drawn in about 35% international students in the last 20 years. But of those 35%, most of those are um, Canadian. They come from the US or Europe. 
and if you look at that international student body, maybe one or two percent of that particular student body comes from other countries in, for example, Southeast Asia, like Indonesia or Thailand. And on the left hand side here, we see Joe Sanka Prasid from Thailand, who is a current student at the moment. Um, and so our program has been very attractive. Um, for Northern American students, mainly Canadians and Americans, um, but we're still building capacity in the Asia Pacific region. Um, and of course, we've had fantastic scholarships over the last few years to try and build that type of capacity um, and, and um, getting students from different regions in and sending them back as professionals and of course that's the best thing that we can do if someone can secure a scholarship at home they already have a job within the field of maritime archaeology um, and then once they can graduate they can take their experience and their new professional skills um, or different professional skills back to the workplace um, and build capacity in their own country um, here in Australia, of course, our, our work body, our professional body is mainly white, and that's certainly an area where we can improve significantly. We have tried in the last um, few years, and this is really starting to happen now, to create special scholarships for, let's think about um, indigenous Australian students um, or other minority groups. And that, of course, is, is very, um, that's a good thing to do, but it doesn't mean that we can always fill those spots because we cannot necessarily find um, students from that background to take up those positions and create that type of diversity. Um, and we have we have certainly within that space. Um, uh, we see more scholarships from different places. On the right hand side, you see Omaima El Deep, um, who came to study at Flinders from Egypt um, with the support of the Honor Frost um, Foundation. So there are certainly things happening in that space, but so much more can be done, especially in terms of mentoring um, and just diversifying our field um, um, and seeing more different voices and different um, views on the work that we do. So I'll hand over, this was the last slide I have, um, just to give some statistics and to show that there is so much more work that can be done. And of course, this group um, of WOMAS women, so not just myself, but um, uh, Deb and Maddie um, and Emily and Tony, um, we're all in a sense alumni of the Flinders program, but the five of us really are only five out of seven or eight women that work professionally in maritime archaeology in Australia. Um, and again, um, the other 20 plus that I can think of are all male. Thanks so much, Wendy. Um, hi all, as Deb mentioned, I am a senior maritime archaeologist working for the Queensland government. I work at the Heritage Branch in the Arts and Heritage Division, and we are the state government agency responsible for the management of Queensland historical heritage. And this includes all underwater cultural heritage sites throughout the state and adjacent waters. In a nutshell, my department is responsible for the management of over 1400 historic shipwrecks and aircraft and aircraft wrecks. I'm pretty lucky as not only is Moreton Bay in southeast Queensland my backyard, but I also have the Great Barrier Reef, which is what you are looking at in this photo here. The single most extensive and persistent influence affecting the Great Barrier Reef is climate change. As you may already know, here in the GBR, we have experienced what has been reported as the third mass coral bleaching event in five years. We are all hoping that if conditions become more favorable quickly, there will be a good chance they will recover. While there are many amazing organizations out there doing fantastic citizen science projects to record and survey the effects of climate change on reefs, to name a few, we have Reef Check, who I am a reef ambassador with, Coral Watch, Eye on the Reef, Reef Ecologic, and so forth. However, none are directly looking at underwater cultural heritage sites, which is something that WOMAST would like to rectify. 
We are aiming to join maritime archaeology science with other ocean sciences to create a more holistic view of not only the GBR, but also other areas around Australia. We aim to do this by bringing people together to engage and connect with community, marine sciences, ocean conservation, and any passionate people who have a love for all things maritime. Um, WOMAS would like to offer real life fieldwork opportunities and experiences to provide a platform for people to network and collaborate so that we can better understand, value and protect our reefs and oceans. So often things are theoretical and we want to facilitate real hands-on experiences. I know for me, I learn best when I am out on and in the ocean looking at photographing and recording shipwrecks and the marine environment on reefs. COVID has seriously impacted our fieldwork plans, but once this pandemic settles down, um, this will be something that we plan to achieve. This photo that you see here is a project I was lucky enough to be involved in, and this is a shipwreck called the Martha Ridgeway, um, which was wrecked on the Great Barrier Reef in 1842 in Wreck Bay. This is a fantastic shallow site in the far north Queensland. As already mentioned, WOMAST isn't just about maritime archaeology. We also want to reach out to other marine scientists. I know here in Australia, maritime archaeologists have not fully developed a role within marine biology, ecology or other sciences, and this is something that we hope to change. We aim to be more than just an online platform. We are encouraging researchers and those interested across maritime disciplines to look laterally at projects. Once we have settled into the new norm, um, we will be organizing collaborative field opportunities to help launch a more engaging network. These photos here are some examples of sites that are potentially penciled in for WOMAS field projects off the Queensland coast, of course. Um, um, we are keen to encourage opportunities for people who wouldn't normally lead a project or have a chance to participate in a more diverse project. This is a maritime archaeology, sorry, this is about maritime archaeology and the integration of all maritime disciplines, including underwater photography, photogrammetry, videography, climate change research, marine biology, ocean technology, and so forth forth. We have so many projects that are waiting to be explored in Australia. Some of these sites may include the Scottish Prince, which is the top left and middle photos. On the right is the Martha Ridgeway. The bottom left is the foam anchor, which is in the remote Myrmidon Reef. And in the middle bottom photo is the Aarhus shipwreck, which is based at the top of Morton Island. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Um, now, I'm going to hand you over to Emily. Thank you so much. And thank you. Now, tonight, everyone, I am two people. First, I have the great honor to be filling in for Dr. Maddie McAllister, who is another one of our team members who is currently out in the field. Maddie is our core team member who is most knowledgeable and skilled in social media. So if you have any deep or probing questions about our online platforms, and we four cannot answer them, please do send these questions direct to our Facebook page and Maddie will get back to you. Now our social media platform launched in early June and it was off with a bang from the start. Womast has both Facebook and Instagram public pages that we post to regularly. And we currently have 400 likes current on the page and Twitter is on its way. We've just had a fantastic person offer her skills to help us grow this area, which we are grateful for and is indeed good news. We also have a Facebook private group for those identifying as women only. It is a place for discussion, sharing ideas, projects and research and in future will serve as a host site for a virtual mentorship program. This group currently has over 110 members. Social media is a great and easy way for us to increase awareness of women in maritime fields. We can curate our own content, but also reshare 
and highlight great work by others. It also comes across as more personable. We've had messages already from young women that find their passions and life goals sit somewhere in between all the normal disciplines and industries. The response since our launch a few weeks ago has been amazing. We will do our absolute best to deliver what you, the people, want. And one of the best ways to do this is to tell us what you want. So please do anytime. And now I switch to me. I'm trained as a maritime archaeologist, but I'm currently working as the curator of ocean science and technology. This means my working remit is a bit broader, which is something fun to bring to WOMAST. First of all, we'd like to acknowledge that we are relative newcomers to what is a vibrant, inclusive, and wonderful global community of individuals working together to collaborate across ocean spaces. STEM fields, in particular groups like Women in STEM and Science and Technology Australia, have been doing this well, and we will work with them and learn from them as we go along. Where we hope WOMAST helps support futures is through creating a safe space for recognizing and celebrating the links between all aspects of scientific, technological, creative, and social research in the maritime world. Many in maritime fields are now looking towards the upcoming UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, which is inherently collaborative in its approach to ocean futures. WOMAST will operate as a support mechanism and information clearinghouse for maritime archaeologists and marine researchers from across the globe to learn from each other and work together. One of the quickest and easiest ways to expand your reach and engage maritime communities beyond archaeology is through profiling and promoting women engaged in various maritime art, science, and technology disciplines. In a COVID world, this can best be done virtually via webinars, interviews, and project program profiles, advertising jobs, creating opportunities for scholarships, and funding opportunities, especially for those from marginalized communities. WOMAST is now compiling a series of interviews with women who are brilliant role models, as well as planning our first set of webinar and panel discussions for the group. This is within the discipline and without, like, for example, true stories of getting and keeping jobs. Our scope is broad, but we are actively looking for people and projects to profile, so please do contact us with any suggestions for content. To close, I'd like to just say that in the face of COVID, research has shown that women's jobs are 1.8 times more vulnerable than men's. And where women make up 39% of the workforce, they also make up over 54% of overall job losses. As Wendy indicated earlier, the five of us here represent most of the women working in maritime archeology span fields across the continent. So we see it as our responsibility, our right, and our joy to ensure that there continues to be a platform for women through WOMAST. And I'd like to, again, thank everyone for listening this evening and direct you to the next fantastic COVID talk, which you can see the information slide in front of me here. Thank you.